Last week I was talking about the goodness of God. What is it that leads people to repentance? It's the goodness of God. That we are to be ambassadors of his goodness. We're to be, <laughs> to learn to see through the eyes of Jesus. We prayed and, and we reached our hands up that we would be able to receive another revelation so we could begin to see as Jesus sees past the faults, past all of the junk in people's lives, and be able to dig for the gold when we can see what Jesus sees in people. That we are to be love leakers. As ambassadors of Jesus, that we just run around and leak his love. Just leak his love on people. This morning, I want Christy and Renee both to come up here. You know, we had the most amazing trip. We had a vacation. We had a time to get refreshed. We had a time to get renewed. And we also got to do some ministry, which was the most blessed part of that, of that trip, of that time that we got to spend in Mexico. And Linda, I'd like to just start with that video, if you, if you have that available right there. This is a story that after you get to watch the video, I'm going to let Christy explain a little bit about what happened as we are the ambassadors of God's goodness. We get the lights off to just for a second too, and hopefully this is going to have some sound. Okay. Christy, I'm going to let you explain this. This time, all it looks like all we have is a picture. As long as we can get them dancing at the end. That's the best part anyways. Yeah. So we were at the, it was our last day at the hotel there. And that lovely lady, her name is Ines. And from the beginning, we just loved her. She was the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, watch this. Because it's the best part. It's even better when you know why they're dancing. <laughs> it's getting better, getting better. <laughs> so what had happened is we, we were sitting there, I think having breakfast or something, and we're just like, God, we just really want to love on the staff here. They were so amazing, and they treated us so well. And so we're just sitting there, and I was like, God, I really just want a word of knowledge for someone. Like, what do you want to do? Who do you want to heal here? And I kept hearing back pain and stomach pain. So I was like, okay, well, I think someone has that. So I saw this lady, Ines, and I was like, I just, maybe it's her, I hope it's her. So I went up to her, tried to communicate with her, total communication barrier, a little difficult for a minute. I was like, do you have pain in your stomach or your back? And she's like, no, but in my foot I do. So I was like, sweet, let's pray for it. And turns out she had had a bone spur in her foot, which is where, it's like you have a little extra bone sticking out. So instead of her heel looking normal like this, she had a little point sticking out of it. So whenever she would walk, she'd be in terrible pain. And so I was like, okay, well, can, can I pray for you? And she thought, well, I have to go downstairs because she was working at this time. She was like doing all of her duties. And I was like- She had a plate full of food right there. Yeah, she was there. holding food about to deliver it to someone. I was like, can I follow you? Can I go down with you? She thought, yeah. So I'm in the elevator with her, just like, okay. And she walks into some hidden room, and I'm just standing there in the hallway like, all right, she'll come out sometime. And so she comes out. We sit down, pray for her. And I was like, how does it feel? And she said, still hurts. I was like, well, let's pray again. So we pray again. What, what about now? What are you feeling? Still hurts. I was like, one more time. Let's just pray again. So we pray, and she goes, oh, muy tranquilo. I was like, I, I think that means peaceful. I think that's a good thing. And she's all, yeah, it doesn't hurt. So she stands up and starts stomping her foot, and she's completely pain-free. I talked to one of the other ladies to try to find out what was actually wrong, because I knew that her foot hurt, but I didn't know what was going on. And the doctors had even said that it was a sp the bone spur, that she was going to have to go to the hospital, have a surgery on it. But the problem with that surgery is it was going to grow back anyway, so she was just bound to be in pain. And so everyone was so excited the second that that happened. And then I was like, well, we have to tell everyone, Ines. We need to tell them you got healed. She's like, okay. So we went upstairs and found my parents, and they had just been praying for... The guy who was, who was standing up there dancing with her, who had, uh, he was feeling weak and having some chest problems because he had some heart issues. We prayed over him. The Lord took away the, any of the pain, the discomfort, and he was 
completely healed, feeling all better and feeling energized to the point that they just started dancing together. They were giggling and, and, so much, <laughs> dancing and giggling. And if you, could, uh, if you could have heard the video, there was all giggling, there was laughing, and they're just dancing and having a wonderful time. The joy of the Lord just invaded right there, and they just were laughing. And we were laughing too because of what was happening, because the presence of God just, just fell, and it was a, a, an amazing, a, amazing time. And we got to see God touch them, bless them, and we got to walk away with big, big smiles on our faces. Because God is so good. All the time. And when we went back later, I think the next week, all, they were just giant smiles like, oh my goodness. So they were still feeling amazing. Yeah. Receptionist? Oh, yeah. Okay, one, one other story that was really awesome. Your interpreter. So the lady who interpreted what had happened to her foot, to Ines's foot, I started talking to her because I was like, C can I maybe get a video of you saying what happened so that we, we really get this down of what happened to her foot? And she's like, yeah. And so we're talking about it. And I was like, what about you? Do you have any pain going on? Like, you know, maybe stomach pain or back pain? And she's all, mm, no. And then finally she goes, okay, well, I went to the chiropractor two weeks ago and my back's feeling better now. I was like, can we just pray for it just to... Guarantee that it's going to feel amazing. She's all, sure. So we prayed for it. And when we get done, she's all, oh, it felt hot where you're praying. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's a good thing. Like, that's a sign of healing. And then she goes to say that the reason why she had back pain, because a year ago she had had a miscarriage and that had caused back problems. And so after that, it was so amazing because God just started loving on her so much. Yes. And she just starts crying, and it was like hope was releasing her again. And we just got to speak destiny into her and actually pray for her that she'd be able to have babies again and to have that life living inside of her. Yes. And it was the most beautiful thing because all of a sudden it was clear why I'd had some total wrong word of knowledge for someone else about stomach and back pain because he wanted to lead to this amazing woman who needed hope again. Yes. And so it was just beautiful. Thank it was so Jesus. beautiful. And knowing that our steps are ordered of the Lord, the most interesting thing happened next. We, we, we went from our friend's hotel that he put us up in first to another one in the next little town, another one right on the beach, a little nicer one the second time. And in that hotel, we were, ended up connected to the manager of the hotel. His name was Jesus. And uh, I just felt as, as uh, he was great to us, just, just wonderful to us. They, they took such great care of us while we were there, but I felt especially kind of a connection to Jesus, like I'm going to need to spend a little bit of time with him. I'm going to need to talk to, talk to him. So one day I just went down there, and uh, there's, when you stepped into the hotel lobby, that you know, there's the, the marble counter thing on one side, then right across from it, about maybe 10 feet away, there's a glass office. And that's the, off, the manager's office, and that's where he was at, is, was in that office. So, so one day I went in there, and I, and I sat down and just started to visit with him a little bit, and he just he kind of started really pouring his heart out to me and, you know, just telling me, uh, <laughs> like I said, just pouring his heart out to me, to some of the issues that were happening in his life. And I'd asked him where the church is. Jose Luis, our friend, I said, you know, where is his church? Do you have any idea? I need to get connected to him. I need to find out how to get to his church. And he said, uh, well, I know how to get there. And I said, oh, you do? He says, yes. <clears throat> I assume that he probably would be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, the Catholic church because that's where the majority of them, of them go. But he said, no, I know the church of Jose Luis, where he goes. And I said, okay. Well, how do you know that church? He said, well, I went there at one time. I said, oh, Okay. So we visited a little bit, and he said, you know, a lot of things have happened in my life, and I've just drifted away, and I haven't been in church for a long, long time, but I know where the church is. And so, so that kind of opened a conversation, and, and uh, as he began to share more and more and, and get more personal with me, I said, well, Jesus, I have a team that's here, and we could sure pray for you, and that would be my wife, my daughter, myself. Is there, I said, is there anything that we could pray for for you? 
And uh, he thought about the team concept, and he said, no, I don't think so. Uh, but you, you could pray. And there's always a little lost in translation when primary, the primary language is Spanish, and my primary language is English. He spoke fairly good English. I speak terrible Spanish, about <laughs> this much of it. <laughs> All four words I do really well. Uh, See, sí, see. Sí. <laughs> so he, I said, well, what would that be? How, what would you like me to pray for you? And he says, my son and, and myself, my, my son and I, we need this. It's like, okay. And my son's here. He's right there. He's about a 20-year-old kid who had just had some problems, been in jail and just been released from jail. So I said, oh, okay. So they both came in the room. We're in the little glass room now. We, we shut the door, but everybody can see that comes through the lobby that, that we're in there. And, and uh, they're standing together side by side. And, and, and I, I put my hand on Jesus and, and just began to, you know, to pray for him to start with because I wasn't really exactly sure and just asking the Holy Spirit what direction that we needed to go. And, and uh, I heard we're talking about restoration of a relationship. A reconciliation here that needs to happen and I just heard forgiveness 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 and so I just said well I heard forgiveness which one of you needs to ask the other one for forgiveness and and the young man the son said that, that would be me and he says and I'm kind of working on that I'm trying to figure out how to do that and I said well this is gonna be easy I said, what I want you to do is just tell your father exactly what you've done and ask his forgiveness, tell him that you're sorry for that. And he's like looked at me a little, little startled, like, it's that easy? He turned to his dad and he started speaking in Spanish, so I only understood little bits of it, and his dad just grabbed him and just pulled him right in, and they're both just crying as they're, you know, they're just... <clears throat> together like that, and I'm watching just this amazing transformation take place, this amazing reconciliation in a relationship that's just happening right before my eyes because I had the opportunity to stand there, ask the Holy Spirit what was needed, pray over them, and watch that miracle take place. Then I asked the son, is there anything? I just felt like there's more, there's more. I said, have you ever asked Jesus into your heart to be Lord of your life and he said you know that's something that I kind of feel like I need to be working on that too and I said hey I got a solution for you right here we can handle that right here too and he's okay I said you know how you've just asked your father for forgiveness yeah I says well you just asked your Heavenly Father for that same kind of forgiveness I says, and he can forgive you, and you can be reconciled to him the same way that you have just been reconnected with your dad. He says, well, dad, as I told you, we've, we've talked a little bit, and, and dad has said, you know, I, I've strayed away. I need to get back with, you know, back into church, back in relationship with, with the Lord. And so as I'm leading son through the prayer of repentance and of connecting, asking Jesus to come in to be Lord of his life, dad is repeating this same prayer with me. So both father and son <laughs> repented, were reconnected to Jesus, and it was just incredible restoration all the way around. So I just got to, <laughs> but the funny part, and, and Renee and Christy had just come down out of the elevator and they're looking in this little glass room, it's like, oh, do we go be a part of this? Do we ignore it? What, what do we do here? So they just kind of turned their backs and walked around. <laughs> and then some people came in and were on the other side. They were waiting for Jesus to come out there because the assistant was gone somewhere. So I'm standing there with my hands on both of their heads just praying over them and you know, seal this deal and speak blessing over them and people are starting to walk through the room and look in on them. So God is so amazing and he is so faithful and if we'll just step across that chicken line he's ready to use any of us anytime <sighs> start preaching here just a little bit I got a message to bring but I think I've got uh, like a parable a little story before the message 
Um, I, I felt like the Lord taught me something this week. Uh, I, I got a little, a little lesson, a little object lesson. Joan talked about object lessons. Make sure I got that $100 bill in my pocket now. <laughs> I can feel the crinkles right there, so we're safe. Uh, wow, threw myself right off there, didn't I? I have a paint sprayer. I have a commercial paint sprayer, and it's something that I really take, I really take good care of, and I really don't like to, so please don't ask me to borrow my paint sprayer. Um, I'm telling you, I got a paint sprayer, and, and any time I use that thing, or, or one of the guys that works for me use that thing, it has to be cleaned a special way. You got to make sure that everything is cleaned out of it so you can use it the next time. Well, I loaned it to somebody. And that paint sprayer, anytime, you know, the product that you want to deliver, you can look at the splotch on the, you know, in the paint store, or look at the color of that paint, and that's what's going to be on the wall. If the vessel that you have, if the tool that you use is clean and ready, what you see in the bucket, what you've seen on the splotch, is what's going to be on the wall. If... That thing is not well cleaned up and, and, and really taken care of. You look at the product, you look at the source, you look at where you want to spread it, you tap into the source, you grab the tool, you get ready to spread it, only, uh-oh, nothing even came out. The thing was clogged up because it had been tainted. What was picked up out of that thing wasn't cleaned up, and it was some junk that ended up in that gun, and I had to take it and have it cleaned, disassembled, and all cleaned up before that thing could be used again. I was thinking, two things that, that, I, that I got from that. It's like, man, you have to be so careful to filter everything that comes into the heart of that gun, that comes through that pump, anything that goes in that needs to be clean and filtered. You need to make sure what you're picking up to try to apply. And man, you need to make sure who you let handle your stuff. Now speak to anybody. Okay, that's the message before the message. Now, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. It's the, video, it's the testimonies that we just shared that, that change people's lives. It's not going out talking the, the scary about gloom and doom and all that. It's the goodness of God. It's the love of God that changes people's lives. And, and for us to be those ambassadors, for us to be spreading the love, to be spreading the good news, man, we got to make sure that this container is clean and that we're filtering everything that we take into this pump. Out of the abundance of the heart, the, mar the mouth speaks, right? Yeah. So if we're going to be spreading the right kind of stuff, we've got to make sure of what we're taking in, that the source is uncontaminated, and we can shoot out exactly what's supposed to be running through this machine. Okay. All right, we're done with that part. I want to turn to, uh, to, to Numbers 11. I, want to, I just feel like we're going to be talking this morning about some prophecy. We're going to be talking about the, the, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit when it comes upon you. And I just want to build a foundation of Scripture here for us. We're going to go clear back to, back to Moses here. Numbers 11. won't be reading a lot of this. I'm going to talk about some of it, read a little bit of it. But we all know what happened to the, to the children of Israel. They were freed from slavery, freed from captivity. God was taking care of them. He led them you know, through the desert, got them to a point. He was taking care of their every need. But they got to a, a place where they wanted some meat. And they started complaining a little bit about wanting some meat. Now, I've never been a vegetarian. I've always been a meat eater. I love my meat. And quail is 
have you ever had quail? Who's had quail here before? Man, quail is some good stuff. That's, that's, that's a treat. But the people were complaining about not having any meat. They're getting tired of that, of that manna that they'd been served for such a long time. And they started grumbling and complaining and crying to Moses. So Moses, in turn, started grumbling and complaining a little bit to the Lord. He says, God, we'll start with the 14th verse of the 11th chapter. He's talking to God. He said, I'm not able to bear all these people alone, God. The burden is too heavy for me. If you're going to treat me like this, please kill me here and now. <laughs> it's like, God, just kill me now. I, I, I can't deal with these people anymore. If you treat me like this, please kill me now. If I have found favor in your sight, <laughs> do not let me see my wretchedness, Lord. So the Lord said to Moses, all right, here's the plan, Moses. All you had to do was ask. Gather up 70 men of the elders of Israel, the ones that you know to be elders, people, officers over them, Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I'll come down and talk with you there. Listen to this part, though. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same spirit upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. I want to just stop on that right there just a little bit. You know, when we think of, and I've had people ask this question, where does that impartation thing come from anyway? We lay hands on people and, and we impart gifts and we impart the Spirit. Paul talks about, you know, stirring up the gifts, laying your hands on. In fact, there is a place where in, in, in Acts where Paul is talking about those who were baptized and, and who baptized you and did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized and then let us come around and lay hands on you that you might receive that spirit and be baptized with power from on high. So impartation. I think that this is one of the first places in the Bible that is expressing impartation. The same spirit that is on you, Moses, I'll put on them. You guys just come together in proximity. I'm going to take that spirit. I'm going to put it on them. So they will then help and bear some of your burdens along with you. Think about 70 people. Jesus brought together 70 disciples. We think of the Old Testament and New Testament and the foreshadow of the New Testament that's spoken of in the Old Testament. 70 people Moses has brought that are coming together in the, in the tabernacle and God's going to speak to them. He's going to take the same spirit that he's put on Moses, put it on these other 70, so they will be able to carry the burden along with Moses. Jesus did the same thing. I can't take care of all of these people. So he brought together 72 people, spoke to them, empowered them, and sent them out to to do what he was doing. He empowered them to continue doing the same thing that he was doing. That's Luke 10. If you want to read the 10th chapter of Luke, he will explain that very clearly to you. I'm going to give you some homework here. Okay. Then, that's problem number one that he, he's posed. You know, I, I can't take care of all of these people. They're driving me crazy. They're driving me nuts, Lord. I can't take care of them. Okay, I'm going to give you 70 helpers. The same spirit that you have, they have now. He said, and also, I want you to go out and tell these people that they're going to have meat to eat. Not meat for a day, not meat for two days, not meat for ten days. I'm going to give them all the meat they want to eat for 30 days. It's like, well, okay, Lord. And the Lord said, and Moses began to say to the Lord, Listen, he's got a little discussion going on right here. The Lord says, all right, you're going to have food for a month, a whole month. He says, you said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. He said, God, shall all the flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough meat for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough meat for them? It's like Moses was saying back to God, it's like, how in the world can we feed all of these people? 
There are 600,000 men on foot. They've got wives. They've got children. God, you have got to be kidding. You want me to slaughter every one of our livestock to be able to feed them? All of the fish from the sea it's going to take to feed these people? How in the world do you expect me to do this, God? Moses was saying, it's up to me, it's up to my thinking, I'm going to have to accomplish this with my hands, with my understanding. And what does God say to Moses right here? This is a huge one. And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether my word will befall you or not. Now, I'm imagining from God's perspective right here now him to say, Are you kidding me right now, Moses? Be serious with me. Did I not lead you out of captivity, bring you out from under Pharaoh? An impossible situation right there. Did I not deliver you there? Come on, Moses. Did I not lead you right to the edge of the Red Sea and when all desperation set in, when there was absolutely no hope, nothing you could do but stand there and pray, did I not come to your rescue? Did I not part the Red Sea for you to cross? And then when Pharaoh's army came in, I drowned them all. It's like, come on, Moses, you can't be serious. You're irritating me right now. Did I not, when you were thirsty, provide water out in the desert? Did I not, when you were hungry, provide food that all you had to do was just go out and gather it up? Moses, come on! Is my arm, has my arm been shortened? It's like, okay, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. He says, now go, share that word with the people. Tell them that they're going to have meat. You're going to just have to trust me on this. I'm not telling you how it's going to happen, but go and speak the word to the people. So Moses went, he shared the word with the people, and we all know what that's, how the story goes. The Lord blew a wind in, brought the quail in, and from a day's journey in either direction, there was quail about this high off the ground that they gathered and had all the meat that they could possibly, possibly eat. God provided. God provided. And the spirit that came on these men, this is the part that I want to talk about, just visit here a little bit. The spirit that came on these men, the same spirit that was on Moses, caused them to prophesy. It's like, oh, wow. They were not prophets, but when the spirit of God came upon them, they all prophesied. Now, how interesting is that? Why did they all begin to prophesy? Because the power and the Spirit of God came, rested on them, and they had words to say, I'm sure, to the whole group of people that were encouraging, that were uplifting, that would make them see and understand that not only was God in control, but this journey is going to get easier because God's with us here. They prophesied uh, undoubtedly for a reason. Something else really interesting in this that I I got that I never really had paid that much attention to before is that two guys weren't there. Two guys were back in the camp. And those two guys were even prophesying. And they were prophesying in the camp. And that concerned some of the the young men. And they ran ran to Moses and said, Wow, these two guys are prophesying in the camp. Uh, what do we do? We need to shut them up, Moses. And what, what does Moses say to that? i am just give you homework for this 11th chapter. You can read that and figure out uh, how this whole story goes and how it unfolds. But what, one of the things that, that Moses said here is that I wish that all of you, that all people were prophets and had this same spirit of God on you. Okay, so from the Old Testament, Moses, his desire would be a wish that everyone would prophesy, would be a prophet and be able to prophesy. Wow, how cool is that? Did you ever understand that? Did you ever notice or see that? That Moses' desire, he said, I wish that all of you had that spirit upon you and would prophesy. 
Then when we go to Paul, Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians 14th chapter 5th verse, he said, I wish all of you would speak in tongues, but even more importantly, I wish all of you would prophesy. It's more important, it's stronger, it's more valuable that you prophesy. It's like, all right, why? Why, why do you think that? Why would he say it's more valuable that you prophesy? Why would Moses? So we're talking two very, very prominent men in the Bible, Moses and Paul, both saying everybody should prophesy. Right? Right? All right. Let me tell you what I believe right here. There are four things that as a believer, a believer in any stage of your walk, that you need to know, that you need to be confident in. Number one is that God really does love me. God really does love you. First and foremost, knowing that God really does love me. Number two, that he has completely forgiven all my sins, that he holds nothing against me. Everybody got that? Everybody have that understanding right now? God really does love you. God really has completely forgiven all your sins if you've only asked him and asked Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. Your sins are instantly forgiven, and he holds nothing against you. The slate is wiped clean. Everybody understand that? Got it. Number three that's so important, and Dory was touching on some of this this morning. I was going, yeah, yeah. How does God see me and Joan, and do I really have value in his sight how does God see me, and do I really have value to him? Does he really value me? Yes. yes, yes. And number four, what is my purpose, and what am I here for? Like, what on earth am I here for? What's my purpose, what am I here for? And when you get a prophetic word... It is a word of encouragement. It is a word of identity. It is a word of purpose for someone. I think back about the very first time that, that, that I received a prophetic word in my life, and I, I've been a Christian for over 20 years. The church that I was in, that's just not something that they did, not something that we did. I never heard a prophetic word for the church. I never heard a, a personal prophetic word for myself. Renee and I had just been married for a little over a year, and we got invited to this very private setting of a, of a, with a prophet, uh, a prophet gentleman. And uh, I went in, and I was very, very skeptical, <laughs> just about a year into Valley and still skeptical. <laughs> we went, and, and I, I sat before this guy, and he'd take you into a private room. This was not in a setting in front of a bunch of other people, into a private room, and, and he and he started speaking some things. And, and, and first it was words of knowledge. And it's like, how do you know that? You're kind of freaking me out here just a little bit. And then he spoke more. He started just really reading my mail. And I was like, whoa, whoa. This is nuts. How do you know all that stuff? Because I'd never been exposed to it. I had never been around it. So he had my undivided attention when he could tell me some things about myself that he had no way of knowing. He had some words of knowledge that God had given him. So I knew right then, you know what? God does have a message for me in this. I am somebody special. He does love me. He does care for me because he's sending me a message right through this guy that's just for me. Now that's some of the value that comes from a prophetic word, no? When you receive that, that, that special word, when somebody starts telling you something about yourself that God had to reveal to him, you know that God is interested in you because he's using somebody as a vessel to speak to you through him. And that's what last week we are just asking for. Lord, 
use me. Use me. Give me that download. Show me so I can touch somebody. Show me so I can bless somebody. Lord, I just want to be used by you. One of the things, when, when, when God starts to pour his Holy Spirit out, uh, we're going we're gonna to go back to the Old Testament here just in a little bit and build another foundation of Scripture because God very specifically anoints with his Holy Spirit when he brings that powerful Holy Spirit down to settle on you. It's very specifically Typically, specifically, for a reason. Typically, specifically, for a reason. And that's not for you. One of the things that we have to learn is, you know what, it ain't all about you. Just turn to your neighbor and say, it ain't all about you. Okay, you turn back and say, it ain't all about you. It's about building His kingdom. God wants to pour His spirit Holy Spirit out to endue you with power from on high to accomplish His purpose in your life. I'm going to say that again. He wants to accomplish His purpose in your life. Sometimes we think, oh, Holy Spirit, I, I just need you so bad because I just need to get through this. I'm eternally minded. I know that I'm going to be going to heaven as long as you'll give me the strength to just take one more step and get through this. I just need to survive this life, God, so I can go on to be with you. It's like, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit comes and empowers you specifically with a gift, with an anointing, so you can use it to build the kingdom of God. And we receive a prophetic word over our life that says, you're going to do, the, you're going to do something amazing. You're, you, you have this. Somebody sees a picture for your life that, that's, that's amazing, and, and they lay that out for you. They plant that seed in you, and you're like, oh, I, that doesn't sound, I, I'm not so sure about that. I couldn't do that. But then we go back to where he's speaking to Moses and says, has my arm shortened? I think about, <laughs> has my arm shortened, the provision of God. John and Connie shared a testimony here a couple of months ago. They, were, they had a struggle with the internal revenue service. It's like, oh, there is no escape from the internal revenue service. Their claws go deep, and they hang on tight, and they don't let go. But God says to them, has my arm been shortened, or will you believe in me? They had over $60,000 of debt just released because of the provision of God in their life, because they were calling on the Holy Spirit. Help me here. Help me here. There's nothing hopeless because his arm has not been shortened. It's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He sees you, he knows the need in your life, and he wants to be able to use you, and sometimes he has to free you up to be able to use you. Is he going to take that debt away just so you can do something stupid with your money? No, no. God's got big plans for your life. He wants to use you to advance his kingdom, but he doesn't want you to be in bondage of that $60,000 of debt to the Internal Revenue Service. So he's freed you up from that to be able to use you in a mighty and a powerful way, and I know that's already beginning to happen in your lives. Thank you, Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on you for a specific reason, for a specific purpose. That's to empower you to accomplish His will in your life. Let's turn to... Leviticus, 31st chapter of, of Leviticus. We're going to go back 
Old Testament, old school, to, to just show you some of this. When, when God had, had directed Moses with exactly how he wanted his tabernacle to be built and all of the things that he wanted to be involved in the, in the worship and uh, in the ceremonies in his temple, he said, okay, Moses, here's what I've given you. I'm giving you Bazalel. I've filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving in wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. So the Holy Spirit comes on you to give you wisdom, to give you creativity in all kinds of things as long as it coincides with his purpose for your life. Some people are to be craftsmen. Some people are to be apostles, teachers, pastors, evangelists. But others are to be craftsmen. When you look at the facility that we're in right here, I feel like God gave Pastor Rutzen an incredible vision. He gave him the wisdom. He gave him the strength. He gave him the resources to accomplish this incredible vision that he had. And that was through the Holy Spirit, through the giftings that he already had. The sixth chapter going on, And I indeed have appointed with him Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all who are gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. So God gives the gifts. God brings the Holy Spirit into those gifts, the Spirit of God, to accomplish what His desire is for your life, His will. In Acts 1.8, says, you will be endued with power from on high. Once again, to accomplish my will, to go and to preach the gospel. Luke 24, 49, you will be endued with power. Matthew is talking about you will be endued with power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. When Jesus was baptized, the dove came down upon him. The Spirit of God came down upon him as a dove. He was empowered to accomplish the task that was set before him. The Holy Spirit has a task specifically for your life, and it's to equip and empower you. The Word says, Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out demons. Be my witnesses in all the earth. So we are all called to advance the kingdom of God. We are all called to have the Holy Spirit come down and empower, endue us with power to accomplish the purpose that God has created you for. And when true happiness, when true contentment to ever end up with true happiness and contentment in your life, it's when you find your purpose, when you step into that purpose that's fulfilling what God's called you to do. That's when you start to experience contentment. That's when fulfillment comes into your life, when you come into alignment with the purpose of God for your life. And it's those prophetic words, so often a prophetic word, that, that, that word that somebody shares for you. We, we've got a team of evangelists, of, of prophetic people that's coming starting Saturday, Sunday of next week. And we're going to be able to experience a lot, a lot of prophetic words. I believe that God's got something for each one of us that, that, that's going to be a, mark a new day for us starting next week. So I encourage you. Be here. Bring somebody with you next week. But it's the Holy Spirit in our lives that leads us, that directs us, that empowers us. Pastor Rutzen? Let's stand together. God has spoken this good word to us today for a purpose. 
for a real purpose that you could leave this place empowered, strengthened, and enabled to do what you need to do, what you're faced with this week. And I believe God's going to support his word and fulfill his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the promise that you have made to your people. I thank you, Lord, that you have assured us that you are with us and that your power will be with us and that you will give us the victory. So right now, Lord, I just pray that you would breathe upon this congregation. Let a fresh breath of your presence blow over this congregation right now, Lord, giving faith, confidence, and assurance. Visit us, O oh God, with your supernatural power. Right now, we pray. Praise God. Praise God. The theme and the thought this morning was God's promise. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power there means enablement, capability, sufficiency, adequacy. And I believe there are those here today that came specifically needing to receive ability to accomplish or to cope or to do what's needed to be done in your life or your family or your home. And God has made provision for us. So first of all, I think it's important for us to understand he promised us that. I want you to say with me, he promised me that. He promised me that. It's his promise. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So you have his promise. Not my promise. Not somebody else's promise. You have God's promise that he is going to empower you and enable you. And when God promises, what happens? He follows through. He fulfills it. So he promised you. You shall receive power. Next, to understand what it's all about. Receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. The purpose is power. Don't confuse the two things of the speaking in tongues and the power part. Tongues is the evidence. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. That's the evidence. But the important thing is the purpose to enable you to empower you, to help you do and be what you cannot be in yourself, in your own strength. Boy, that sounds good to me. Don't, doesn't it sound good to you? Hallelujah. God is for your success, for your overcoming victory, for your accomplishment. God is for that. God's not against you. God's for you. And he said, to show you how much I'm for you, I'm going to give you my power. I'm going to give you my spirit. And I'm going to enable you. And I'll fill you with my spirit. And so when they were in one place, in one accord, suddenly, God doesn't take a century. God doesn't take two years to fill you with Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. As we agree... And we come into unity in the Spirit. God will pour out His Spirit upon us. So I want you to agree right now. Even if you have not received the baptism, I want you to start right now to believe. Well, God promised this. His Word says He will. And so I'm going to believe. So right now, I want you to begin believing. 
and now I want you to act on God's promise. And I know there's many here right now that need this specific because God spoke this word to us this morning. You need some power, strength, enablement. You need some encouragement. You need some guidance and some wisdom. His spirit will lead and guide you for whatever you're going to face in the next week or month. And I believe there's those that need that right now. So come right down to the front right now. We're going to act on God's promise. We're just going to believe his word. And we're going to believe he's going to fill us with his spirit. I'd like for those who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit just to come right forward right now. Hallelujah. You are facilitating a marvelous promise of God. A wonderful provision of God. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful thing God has promised to us. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know there's many more, many more. You're hungry for the Spirit of God. You're hungry for His enablement. You're hungry for His power. Hallelujah. Prayer team, come find your places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in one accord, in one place, there came from heaven the sound of His Spirit. I want everybody in this room right now to begin to facilitate and open a channel and a vessel and a place for the Holy Spirit to settle and move in your life. Hallelujah. So let's lift our hands to the Lord in faith and confidence. And God's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power. Believe that right now. Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. Open your heart to Him to receive His enablement. Where you're weak, He'll make you strong. Where you're fearful, He'll make you confident and assured. Where you're doubtful, He'll give you faith and confidence and assurance. Hallelujah. So let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's thank Him for His presence. Thank Him for His power. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit just flow through you right now as you begin to praise Him. He'll spring up within you like a, a fountain. And you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Baptize them now, Lord, with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Be filled. Be filled with God's Spirit. Be filled with God's power. Be enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's right. That's his promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what he said he would do. Hallelujah. 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 That's what he said he would do. Hallelujah. You shall lay hands on them and they will speak in tongues. They'll receive power and enablement. Hallelujah. Power and strength from you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Filled with the power and the presence of the Lord Jesus. Be filled with His Spirit. Hallelujah. Be filled with His power and His presence. Hallelujah. Keep praising Him, saints. Keep praising Him. Keep worshiping Him. Hallelujah. Facilitate a place and a vessel for God to pour out His Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name. We bless your name, we bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that's right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, God's doing what he said he would do. God's doing what his promise was to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise you for the Holy Ghost. We praise you for the Holy Spirit. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is power, power, 
wonder-working power in the blood oh, of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power, the precious blood of the Lamb.